go. Talia, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and doing this interview with me. Um, you are a realtor right now in Michigan, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, so let's just jump in here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got into real estate. How, how long have you been in the industry? I've been licensed for three years now. Three years, me too. So I actually am going into my thir third year. So that's amazing. Nice. So tell yes. me like what drove you to this industry? Well, you know, I started out, um, I've been working. I worked at the hospital straight out of high school. My mom worked at the hospital. So I started right at the hospital. I was there for 14 years. Oh, wow. So um, yeah, what were 14 you doing years. there at the hospital? So I, I started off as a unit clerk. Um, then I was a financial representative and then a medical biller. Gotcha. And so, so I loved it, honestly. For that money. Point, <laughs> yes. And at one point, I actually wanted to go into nursing. Oh, really? I actually okay. wanted to go into nursing. But, um, you know, I was just doing really well promoting there. I loved it, loved the company and everything. Um, but I always loved houses and HGTV, all that good stuff. Everybody and, you know, always it, brings up HGTV, it, right? Listen, we love it though, right? But when, we, when we're shopping with clients, yeah, it could be a little bit painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like my favorite show was House Hunters. Okay. I love that yeah. show. Yeah, because they know, made they it look so dollars. simple and easy though. It's just three <laughs> houses. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that right. ain't how it works. That, that ain't how no. it works. So if you're Listen watching this, we just want you to know we as realtors, we love HGTV, but yeah. that's not reality. That's not okay? reality. <laughs> mm. Okay, so something just was always calling you into the real estate industry. Yeah, so and funny. you know, um, some years back, my husband and I got in the house and um, we had a realtor that we worked with. She was She was great. But in hindsight, looking back at the deal, there was a lot of things we did not know as first time home buyers. And I was like, man, this is a big deal. This is a big transaction. Is yeah. This is something you should definitely feel comfortable and knowledgeable going into it. And I didn't feel like I had yeah. that. So I was like, you know, if I ever did this, I would like make it my mission to make sure people are comfortable, knowledgeable about what they're going into, yes. especially being the biggest investment you'll ever make in your life. So I'm like, I, I want to help people. You know what? And so it's that's so funny because I'm... I never wanted to be an agent. Um, I have a training background. I went to realtor school so that I can learn real estate because just like you, I felt like me and my husband started shopping and I felt like it was a gap in understanding and I couldn't yes. take the leap because I was like, I don't know enough. And the agent right. there didn't, it just didn't make me feel comfortable. So yes. I was like, I'm going to be that agent that's going to teach my clients. I'm not going to tell mm -hmm. them the decision to make i'm going to give them enough information so that yes. they know how to make the decision for themselves so i feel like Absolutely. most of us that are successful in this space we go we come to it from that kind of standpoint because yes. i continue to hear that kind of story over and over again mm -hmm. so you're like because i think going... about like what i wanted and needed in that yep. moment and what would have really really have helped me and so i try to make sure i reciprocate that to someone else i yep. kind of put myself in their shoes and um, think about how I would want to be treated and what I would want to know. Yep, yep, agree. So you say, hey, I'm going to real estate school. Yeah, so, okay, so we have, I have been married, it'll be 14 years in February. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Thank That's you. amazing, 14 years. 14 years are coming up on. And so we have three beautiful girls, 12, Aww. 10, and five. So, you know, oh. the first two, yeah, <laughs> my hands are full. But the first two, you know, with me working at the hospital, my, my husband actually worked at the hospital too, a different hospital, U of M. And so we worked opposite shifts. He was on midnights. And then at some points I was working days or evenings or things like that. But we always worked opposite shifts. So we didn't really need childcare. We just, you know, we were a team, work. worked together yep. and everything. But by the time baby number three came around, we were both on the same shift, the day wow. shift, and he was with another company. So I've never put a baby in daycare. I like him to be a little bit older and can yep. talk and let me know what's going on. Yeah, um, girl. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And so um, when I was pregnant and then working this job and I just wasn't happy in it anymore. I mean, it was a stable job. Don't get me wrong. Yep. Had my insurance. It was job That security. comfort, like that yes. comfort job. Yes. Yes. So, and yeah, so I, I had all of that. Nothing bad to say about it, but I just wanted more. And so when I had my last baby, went on maternity leave and we talked about, I was like, you know, 
I don't, I don't want to go back. Wow. And, and I didn't want to put my baby in, in childcare. So we talked about it and we were like, you know what? Let's try this stay at home, you know, stay at home mom thing. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, and honestly that was secretly, I used to be like, oh, when I get married, I'll be home with my kids and all this <laughs> Girl, <laughs> that that ain't that ain't I mean, where it is, huh? That yeah, ain't. Listen, stay at home mothers. Wow. Man, I I don't I don't have children at this moment, but I I had I had a little taste of it uh, with my nieces and nephews for like six days. Recently, I worked I harder like, as a stay-at-home mom. It's never it's a, it's a lot. It never ends. It's, right. So when you go to work, you clock in, you clock out. But like yeah. that no. never ends. And most no. people I know don't don't they don't have a desire to do it. <laughs> and it it would be funny because you know that you want to have your husband come home from work, house is clean, the dinner's no, done, that's the not kids. Are, <laughs> uh, when he walking over, like, take your baby. <laughs> Yes, yes. But but I do love it. I loved it. And like, you know, I had two that were in school and then I was home with the baby. And that last one, you know, it's funny because you're never really with your kids 24-7. Because you know, they usually go to daycare or someone else is watching. So this is the first time mama was home with the baby the whole time. (laughs) I'm like, this last one, yeah, that's my little busybody. Oh, wow. but um, but from there, um, so I stayed a full year, and I was like, okay. you know what? We were talking, and I, although I loved it, of course, I'm happy to be with my children. There was more. Again, I still wanted more, and I'm like, you know, it's always in the back of my mind. Real estate. I'm like, honestly, this is the perfect time to kind of pursue that. Yeah. And so yeah. I talked with my husband. He was like let's go for it. So I, you know, talk to my support system. My husband is my brother, my mom and my sister-in-law. And we kind of worked out a schedule where, um, once my husband got off work, I had, you know, childcare. I took like evening classes. It was like a month and a half at real estate. Okay. One Academy. Okay. And so, um, took that, passed the test on the first time. Yeah. Thank God. But, and even like preparing for the test, I took a whole month off just to study. And I mean, I shut down everything. There was no TV. There was no going out. There was no socializing. Took care of the family and studied. That's all I had to go. I'm I'm taking this test one time. One time. I was the same way. One time. (laughs) One time. Yeah, because you hear stories that. Yeah. 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 You hear stories that people people have taken it over and over again. Yeah. And especially, I think it's one of those things too, where when you once you've been out of the like the student mindset yes. it's hard to get back in it and like study so mm-hmm. it, it's literally working another muscle so all right so you get licensed and you're yes. ready to go out to the world to be i'm ready to go realtor. so yes. what firm do you go with like a big or small do you want to say the name like how what yeah okay. well this is a key this is a key point and i'm happy you asked this because i like i said before i took the courses at real estate one academy okay so that's also a brokerage real estate one. Oh, okay so, okay what if i could do things over what i would have done differently and i highly recommend for newer agents do your due diligence and interview different brokerages yeah i didn't do that yep because i took the classes there i'm like it makes sense right and it's great for them because they can recruit people i'm like it makes it's it's, it's, it's amazing right yeah yeah you see the so they were like well what area you want to focus on and then they put me in an office you know i went and interviewed with her and i was like hey this i was just excited and ready to get started and so i was with them for two years and before i came in real estate you know you play out this whole plan in your head in your mind and what i saw Mm-hmm. And I have always, I'm a big dreamer, always been that way. Yeah, and so <laughs> here I come, I'm, coming to the company, I'm like, I'm about to build an empire. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. And then so the money, nobody, the money, the right, money. Right, right. <laughs> I'm about to legacy generation. Yes. Everybody, I'm about to put the whole family on. I'm all excited. Yep. Yep. And um, the thing that they don't tell you, you know, when you take those classes, that's only to prepare you to pass the test. That's it. They do that's not it. teach you how to sell real estate. So if you're no. listening to this and you're thinking about going to real estate school, we just want you to understand they teach you how to pass the test. It is not to get you prepared to selling. That's something totally different. Totally different. Yep. Yep. And again, I didn't know. There's no, no know. On what to expect yep. going into real estate. So I didn't know. And so, yes, I stuck with that company. And so I'm like, okay, you know, what's next? So I, I was trained about some contracts, things like that. I can write a mean offer. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm like, okay, so how do I get clients? Like, how do I build my business? And so she gave me three tips. She goes, your sphere of influence, cold calling and door knocking. And I'm like, "Mm." okay, the sphere of influence, I can work with that. I can't do no door knocking. I, I can't, can't do I it. Can't, I ain't gonna I'm be scary. Do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm in the city, so knocking yeah. on doors, my husband ain't going for it. <laughs> and you know, and I just, that's, you know, and then it's one thing to be rejected over the phone, but another thing another to do in the face. Right. I'm not, and then they'll approach you on your space. I was like, I'm not comfortable with that. Yep. So yep. I really tried to work the spirit moon influence. So I was with that company for two years. And it took me 10 months to close my first deal. So I ended up selling one house my first year of real estate. And okay, I, let's stop there. Saying that. Let's yeah. stop there. Let's stop there. You're like, what? <laughs> what? Like, yeah. Yeah. okay, so you, you were excited. You got all these hopes and dreams. And then somebody tells you to use your spirit influence and um, door knock and cold call. That's it. What about technology? What about strategy? No, like yeah. none of that was there. So you got okay. I was the youngest one in the office. Okay. I'll just say okay. That. Okay. So as far okay, as technology, there you go. so so that ain't happening. The technology. As far as technology, I'm the like I was the only one with like social media pages that were active and do you know, and I wasn't doing much, but right. But you, know, you just had a technology. Little- so where did you get this one client in 10 months? I'm I'm curious. An open house. Now I became <laughs> an open house queen. Yeah. Me, I can give you tips about open houses all day. And that's how I built my clientele and everything. Okay. And um yeah, my first open house is how well not yeah, actually that was the first open house I did. That's how I met my client. Wow. And it took us a couple months to find the house. Yeah. And so let that, me ask you this. 10 months is a long time to close a first deal as a new agent. Are you scared? Are you frustrated? Are you like, yes. where, are you, where are you in that space? This is how I felt. I was frustrated. I felt lost. Yeah. Uh, almost embarrassed because you see other agents that come into the business and they just take off. It's yeah. like, cool. What am I doing wrong? What and so yeah. we would have weekly meetings, right? Okay. And they would bring in a guest and, <laughs> and they would offer, like some type of program or something that will help you build your business. And I'll be on fire. Like, yeah, I'm going to, I want to try that. But then there'll be a cost attached to it. And I'm like, so that's funny. You say that because as a new agent, there's so many real estate gurus and I'm not saying that they don't have strategies and they don't like the, the programs don't work, but when you're a new agent and like you said, you walked away from your job right so now you guys are on one income and you have mm-hmm. with three kids with three children <laughs> the idea of being able to buy these expensive programs it's just not realistic for a lot of people especially at the beginning and that was one of the things i don't want to jump too much further into the interview yeah. but that was one of the things that has stood out to me from exp cuz i've bought programs right but the training and the resources we have i don't have to buy a program anymore no. you hear me i don't like we have so no. much i haven't even bit off half of what i can you know that's no. available so just hearing that like those agents that are in that predicament you have all these hopes and dreams and when the training and the strategy and the tools aren't there, a lot of people probably wouldn't even have been able to hold on for 10 months before closing one deal. Yeah. So you're stressed and, and out. You're, you're, you're like, this is, this ain't going to work. So what like, do you Did do? I make a mistake? <laughs> did I, I make mean, a mistake? I, I took a huge leap of faith. <laughs> right. Did I make a mistake? Do I yep. go into my husband? Like, maybe this isn't, I mean, maybe I'm not cut out. And for a this. lot of people will have given up. I think the, I yeah. think they say in the first three years, like 90% of agents quit. And it's, yeah. it's very heartbreaking because I think sometimes if people just had the opportunity and the skills and the resources and the coaching, they wouldn't be part of that 98, 97%. Now, I do believe that our, what we call our entry to bear, to get into this industry is kind of low. So you, the numbers can be inflated because so many people come into the industry 
um, and some don't even have intentions on. But those ones that do, I think a lot of them may have had your story because I don't know if I could have held on for 10, 10 months before I closed my first. It was rough. And, yeah. and, 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 and the crazy thing is, you know, I'm, I'm still showing houses. I'm spending the gas, the time. I remember I had one client and um, I'm like, I got to figure something out. And I was like, <laughs> talking to my broker, I'm like, can we do a retainer fee or something? <laughs> right. <laughs> a waste of time you're showing people houses you're doing all this stuff and then i've had people decide oh i'm gonna get an apartment instead yeah they're, find out they're not they're not really ready and yeah the motivation yeah. isn't isn't there. there and so what i wasn't taught is the right questions to ask so you can weed out who's serious yeah, at, the so at, I, the at the beginning so i the beginning at the beginning so i will say i went to a small brokerage as soon as i got out and one of the great things about that is he taught us that from the beginning, because yeah. especially we were taking leads off like um, Zillow and stuff. So we learn how to weed people out and set up traps for them at not traps. You're not going to, yeah. but set up strategies for them that if you don't check these marks, I'm not even, we don't even, this don't even exist. Right. Yeah. But again, that's training. That's somebody, mm-hmm. that's somebody telling you how to do that. So you say, forget it. I'm going where, where, where does your real estate journey lead you to? So one key point I wanted to say, the brokerage I had, I went to, so it was two years I went to it. They had this annual event. Now I was looking forward to this because I heard great things. Like they know how to put on a party, but not only would they put on a party, they would bring in speakers from all over the world. Okay. Amazing coaches, all this stuff, motivational speakers, and they would come with all these tools and resources. And I'm like, this is the only training I'm, once a year I'm getting. Yeah. Besides the little weekly meetings that I would get that Ooh. had an, a fee attached to it. And so one time they brought a speaker, Jared James. He is the only one I would follow his stuff. I couldn't afford the coaching, but I would follow his program. The little tidbits he would give me, I would do. And I would start to slowly. But you were very motivated. Like you would go. I, yeah. I just yeah. wasn't. I didn't have anyone to steer me in the right direction and give me the right tools. I'm like, man, if you could just teach me how to fish, I got yep. to show oh, that's what I need. <laughs> See, I just, I just got me. chills because, you yeah. know, I always, I say that. I say that. I yeah. say you got to teach people how to fish. Yes. Like, and I think sometimes I, it's one of two things. People either don't know how to fish for real. They don't have a strategy to give back to yep. you to duplicate the efforts because yeah. they're just out doing it and nothing is wrong yeah. with those people. Those people are going to be successful, but they can't create themselves over again. Or yeah. two, they don't want to teach you how to fish. They don't have a desire. There's nothing in it for them. And they, they sometimes it's control. Like I want to keep you in this space. So one or two things, but you got to find people that want to teach you how to fish. And, and the other thing is in my situation, I was fishing. I didn't have the right bait. You didn't have, I didn't have the right tools. The tools. The and so the, the point that I want to make with that before we move on is I had to wait a year to have this type of event with amazing trainers. And here I'm, I'm now part of a brokerage that they supply that type of training daily. Daily. <laughs> also, so that's why I say you can't even take it all in. It's just so much. Like, it's, just like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You literally get to just, you yeah. can wake up and plug in at any time. And then if you don't, if you can't plug and in. And we have a small fee, a small fee. <laughs> The, we have a small fee that. we pay monthly. Yeah. With that amount of knowledge that we get. Yes. It's it's, it's it, I can't even <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. so how did how did you end yeah. up here? Like you're 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 10 months in and you yeah. yeah. So second year, so this is what happened. Uh, I had to have a come to Jesus moment with my husband, like because now you know, no one tells you about the fees you have to pay in real estate. Yes, <laughs> excuse me, yes. and um every year. On one income, this has now become a bill. Yep. And so, <laughs> excuse me, I'm feeling bad. Like, I can't ask my husband to take care of everything and now Pay fund my me. business. It's not going to yeah. work. <clears throat> that tickle, sorry. That's- and so we talked about it. He was like, well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> why don't you go back to the hospital and work for one year and do real estate part-time? build up your clientele while you're at the hospital and then work yourself out of that job. Okay. 
I did not want to do it, but I was like, I know it was in the best interest of our family. Seriously, they have a taste of freedom, not have yeah. to report to a boss and be your own CEO and do your own thing. I was enjoying it. And then I could still participate and be involved with my kids and my family and not worry about, oh, I got to call so-and-so to see if they can cover my shift today. You know what right. I mean? I, it's right. just things like this. So I was like, okay. And so this is what's crazy. I went back. I went at a different location at the hospital. So I was at Trinity Health. And it was off of, uh, it was in Novi. So every day for a year, I would pass Mark Z's office. Wow. So and tell I the would, people who Mark Z is, that, that's here. So yeah. Mark Z is actually, I'm on his team. Okay. okay. With ESP. Okay. But I used to pass this office for a full year. And mind you, while I was with Real Estate One, I've been approached by EXP people and, and I was turned off. Maybe it was the way they approached me. Yep. Um, yep. I heard things about EXP, like, oh, they just want you to recruit. Yep. Um, if you go over there, it's not brick and mortar. Your broker will never be available to you. <laughs> and I was just, you know, so, I, you know, again, I'm still new to the business. Right, I'm taking, so you're going to believe yes. what you're hearing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't studying EXP. So, um, but it was crazy because I passed this office for one year and I would always see a lot of activity over there. I'm like, they always got something going on. I'll never go over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And so Yasmin started at real estate with me. That's my sponsor. And okay, Yasmin okay. straight out the gate was doing very, very well. Yeah, she's kicking butt. <laughs> she's kicking butt, okay? And her second year in real estate, you know, she got all these awards with Real Estate One. And next thing I know, she announced that she left the company and switched to EXP. I'm like, that don't even make sense. That don't make sense. Because you heard too much so bad cool. things about who would do that. Yeah. You're doing amazing over here. Why would she leave? But those are the people, that's when you pay attention. I tell people- well, She caught my attention. She caught your attention because when people that are doing amazing things start going one to a certain direction, you want to pay attention. Don't pay attention to the people that ain't doing that because those are people mm-hmm. going to be telling you different stuff. Pay attention yeah. to where the, 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 the top people are going. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and what, what Yasmin didn't know I was already feeling like, I think it's time for me to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Because again, I'm a big dreamer, big thinker. And I see myself, I see the whole thing. I can envision it. And I was like, I don't see this place getting me there. There. And so I started to only look at EXP because I came across Gogo's page. Mm -hmm. And I started following her content. And that kind of intrigued me a little bit. And I said, okay, it was so it was EXP and it was two other brokerages I was considering. But when Yasmin made the move to EXP and under GoGo, a person that I've been secretly watching for like a year, I'm like, I God is this. just showing you from this <laughs> end, this end, this yes. end over here. Because I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, did Mark Z sponsor GoGo? GoGo's in his downline. So his, Kurt sponsored his, okay. Kurt sponsored GoGo, and then Mark is above Kurt. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah. just tell us uh, a little bit, because um, most people, I didn't know who, because I'm not in Michigan, I didn't know who Mark yeah. was, but I think he's a really, really, really big producer. In he's he's huge. He's so a big look him up. <laughs> he's a big deal in Michigan. That's that's he's another one, thing. We have one of the top teams. One, one of, of the, the top, top teams. teams. So make sure you guys look that up if you're wondering who he is, and uh, remember. Yeah watch where the big people are going and yeah and see he even made a big move because he was with keller williams yep took his whole team to exp and it's like okay what's going on here here? yeah yeah. all right so you see all these people going i see the movement and i'm paying attention you're paying attention and so i reached out to yasmin we got to talking and she's like i tell you what there's a workshop at mark z's office i'm gonna go to and go go and mark z are hosting it so you should come with me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go, but I'm not joining Yasmin. I'm just going to go. And she's like, okay, that's fine. So I go and I get there and you walk into this office. And first of all, there's this huge shark tank. And I'm like, okay, I think 50 Cent was playing in the background. I was like, oh. <laughs> what did I because just walk into? I from, exactly. I went from an office. Again, I was the youngest one in the office. Yeah. And, and now you got 50 Cent at a shark quiet. tank. <laughs> yeah, and then I come in here, everybody dressed in suits and stuff, looking fly, and 50 Cent playing in this Shark Tank. I'm like, this whole energy and vibe was 
I've never experienced. They on another and I'm like, wavelength. Oh, <laughs> this is so I was already impressed. I love the environment. And um, they did a 10 week workshop. And I promise you, and I told you, here I am. I'm pretty much information training starved. Yeah. I'm looking for this. Yeah. This is what yes. I want. And then to come to this 10 week session that they had, blown away. I was only supposed to go one time. I ended up going the full 10 weeks. Full 10 weeks. And let me just I, make sure you're like, not even, I, you're not on the team yet like you're no. not at the company yet. i didn't even join yet you didn't even join yet and, and no, they're because giving I was like, you, you know what? 10 weeks of information yep see because yeah. i think people need to catch that when yeah. you when you start working in a space of abundance then people are always going to be giving like it's giving yeah. and it's give and what happens is it became it's become like a ripple effect and you just yeah. keep giving and it's like there's no you're not thirsty anymore there's right. more than enough and if they and, get and it's that something without, about that point, yeah. that point that you made, again, coming from a different environment, I used to ask top producers, hey, you have any tips? How did you get to this point? Yep. Nobody would share that information with me. They ain't sharing it. Because you were competition. To work, and I used to work their open houses. They'll let you work their open houses because they need you. Yes. They don't want to sit there. But when nobody no. telling me no strategy. Nobody. Was, no, nobody was teaching me how to, again, go back to that fish thing. But I, yep. mean, I was taking cute pictures and, and uh, half a million dollar homes. and no, you know, Right. 800, but when nobody teaching me how to do nothing. And I, I Nothing. To, yeah, yeah. So, and so then to come into this workshop and like, I'll give you an example. One of the things you, I told you, I became like the open house queen, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought I would put out like maybe three to six signs for an open house. I go to, <laughs> I go to one of the sessions and they're talking about open houses. Mark is like, we put out 20 to 40 signs in open house. I'm like, what? Oh, wow. not that many signs. That's successive. Exactly. That was my reaction. Legit in front of them, my mouth dropped. Because again, that's not what I was taught is you only put three to six out and be careful because you can get in trouble and they'll take your signs and get fined, depending where you're at. So I'm a rule follower. I'll, yeah, I'll, me I'm too. Always, I'm, I'm a follower. <laughs> I'm a follower so, of the rules. So like, no, that's not that, that, I'm like, that. <laughs> uh -uh. And I even asked the question. It's funny. I think if you go watch and go goes boot camp, I even asked the question, like, is that allowed? <laughs> like, he's like, I do stuff and then I ask for forgiveness later. I'm like, I, I oh. do, yes. Like, ask for forgiveness before you ask for, I'd rather ask what they say, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. So, yeah. Yes, yes. And so, like, so it was things like that. And I'm like, you know what? I got to kind of listen to what you're saying because you guys are highly successful at this. Yep. And then the other thing, like, I used to post like three posts a week. Um, on my social media thinking I was doing something big and then Gogo's like that particular class was about social media and she's like I post 11 to 15 times a day I was like oh I'm not doing that either I'm like first of all I'm not that interesting who is about to listen to me all day posting stuff yeah and, but here's the thing a year later a year later the majority later. of my business comes from social media okay so let's because let's talk about that so you go to yeah. the 10 week workshop and again, yeah. 10 weeks, you ain't gave these people nothing. You just came and- Nothing. Take, and Coach was like, what are you doing? Are you going to join? I'm like, I don't know yet. I got to pray about know. it. I, you know what's so funny? At the end, I did an interview last week. Um, and at the end of it, I talked about how before I made the switch, I did so much research. But when, I, when I did- made my couple first decisions I never did that much research like why it's, did it take like if I would have done as much research on exp as I did the other places I yes. wouldn't have been there but I, think I just did it and went with the flow just went want to know why because it's what is normal yeah it's what is comfortable this is different the model is different everything about this is different so we're yes. we're afraid but yeah. you can't let fear stop you. You have to dig in and figure out like, okay, if this is different, then I need to look at this more and not be so afraid to go. Yeah. Cause you, I, I, most of us ain't do Wally, no research on those other people that we went to work for. Like we do. I was like, I need to pray. EXP. I need to watch the videos. Girl, I they did didn't sit too. in the back room talk to me about EXP. I was like, I'm still not moving. <laughs> like we was joining the was like, Just do it. Just do it. Like, and I'm like, are you sure? He's like, just do it. 
What do we? And I told him, and I remember us having this conversation. You don't. And I said to him, I said, "But what if I take this leap and I fall? I fail." He's like, "And what if you take this leap and you soar?" And you soar, and And it ain't like you was winning. (laughs) Okay, that's the great. It's not like you was winning. You wasn't winning. Like you didn't win. I got a lot of nerve. I have a lot of nerve. (laughs) Like I was killing it over there. What I got to lose. But think about exactly. it, people stay in that stuff because yeah. It, yeah, it's comfortable, is what we know. And no, let me nobody is condemning it because everybody right. is doing the exact same thing. Yeah. People are talking about this because it is different. Yeah. But we need it different. Every yeah. industry has changed. Mm-hmm. Real estate was, we was always told, I was told real estate is local, it's very local. No, it's now I'm coaching agents in other cities. Like it's not, it doesn't Listen, have to be local. Like we, you got. We would have never met line. each other. We we would have yeah, never met. We would each have other. never met each other. Like that's what's crazy to me. And now I'm on calls with people and agents all across the United States, and it's amazing. I'm getting to learn from people like that are showing me even even today when you talk about people being available. I, I just created an ad, okay? This is real time today for one of my listeners. Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. I was and I put in our chat because I was like, something is, I don't know what's going on with this. This is supposed to be doing this, it's not doing this, and something's wrong. I literally dropped it in the chat. In less than 10 minutes, Gogo was like, do this, do that. I don't know what she was saying, doing. I called, she answered, we got on a we got on a Zoom call for over 20 minutes and figured it out together. Wasn't nobody at them other things doing that for me at all. At all, like. But hold on, you you remember you need a brick and mortar building, right? No, you don't need a brick and mortar. Why? So That's I can. I was told because guess what? It was after five doing o'clock. Everything on Zoom, virtual. Yeah, and guess this meeting with her, it wasn't planned, and it was after five o'clock. And it's knowledge that she has that I didn't understand. And it's, it's right And that's what I'm talking about. Like when, when I said earlier, I would ask top producers, like, how did you get here? What do you, like, can you tell me anything? And no yep. one was forthcoming. And then to come to EXP and literally, and when I say top producers, I'm talking about people selling millions and millions of dollars in homes. And okay. let me tell you something. <laughs> Where I be like, I thought I had dreams. My yeah. dreams ain't nothing but a tip of what, Listen. you heard me? And I have <laughs> access to these people. See, because yeah. I believe you can only go where you see. Like I yeah. can only grow to the heights that I'm able to see, envision, and, and what you're exposed to. What you're exposed to. Now I'm exposed. I told my husband, my I, people want to make six figures a year. We know people making six figures a month. In a month? In a month, honey. So okay. I, my vision had to get bigger. Cause I was like, I was thinking I was dreaming too small. I was yeah. dreaming too small. And, but guess what? That's giving us what is possible. That's exposing yeah. us to what is possible. So let's talk about this. You say, I'm going to make the leap. When did you make the yeah. leap to EXP? Uh, August of last year. August of last year. All right. So, we so come, you, you over here, you took that 10 week mm-hmm. boot camp. So now you did, you did yeah. finally say, I'm going to go in and go with the people. Um, right. What does, what does it look like? How does, how does your business change? So I, it was like July, I think when I signed the papers to join. And at first I was going to join as an independent agent, right? And um, Mark Z was offering a three week boot camp training. Now, again, I'm all for information. I want to learn, teach me how to fish. And after witnessing what they do in 10 weeks, I was like, I want to be a part of this. I was so blown away. I'm talking about literally hand holding in this training stuff that I never learned two years at this other company. Okay. So I was like, I think I want to join the team. Like if I could start over, there's a lot of things that I would tell newer agents or agents that are struggling at another company. I would say, do this and this, if I could do things over, I would have done this. And so I would say if you're a newer agent or if you're struggling somewhere else and you want to come somewhere else, I would join a team. So what does a team, what does it, cause I don't have any, I don't have any, um, I don't have any uh, wisdom behind that. So right. I work as an independent um, right. agent, but there are mm-hmm. people that say team is approach. And one of the things I love about EXP, there's so many different options, 
right? So many. So you're open. Oh, you you can go either whatever works for you. Yep. And I've always been one of those people that believes that this works for this person. This may not work. Exactly. Like, find what works for you. So just educate me a little bit on what that team structure, especially at EXP, looks like for you. So and now every team is different, but the okay. particular team I chose to be on is I wanted to be on it because the one hands down the training the training um two was the leads they provide leads um and then so what was hanging me up what hung me up was splits people always say I don't know about teams because that was my thing the splits the splits Garrett James said something before he said do you want 100% of the grape or do you want a slice of the watermelon so you could again Taylor took 10 months to do our first deal (laughs) right my own deal yep or I could have been under a team like a sponge learning all that I can learn yeah and be fed deals and so learn it's in the funny process. you say that because I feel like that's probably how my beginning experience was it wasn't right. quote unquote a team but we worked yeah. for a small brokerage and right. he fed us leads and he trained us so I guess yeah. in essence it was kind of like a team but it really yeah. like we wouldn't consider a team but I get it like he fed us leads and he trained us. That sounds yes. like, so you just had to go back and get that part. So yes. that yes. makes, okay, sounds good. And all so, right. and when I say, now my plan was go on the team and learn all you can, but that's not a forever thing for me. Cause remember I still had big goals and big dreams. Right. Stay there long enough, be a sponge, learn all you can. And then when you have mastered that and learned it, then you branch off on your own. And the benefit of that is I'm still family. You're still family still and nobody's hating you because you did that, right? Nobody's hating you. Like. <laughs> so being with this team, so I have access to Mark Z, all his knowledge, the training of the team. I have access to GoGo, our weekly training. Literally, she pours, GoGo's boot camp, she, she pours out yeah. everything. Yep. Okay. And then EXP. That's not even like- I was like going to really say, you're in. talking about training outside of what we get at EXP. Yeah. which is amazing this anyway. is, you will never lack you will <laughs> never <laughs> lack right, you will right. never lack okay yep, yep. and so with all of that i'm big on okay yeah i want the training but it's one thing to learn but never apply it yep a lot of people That's they true. want all these tools they spend the now money on coaching mean, but then you don't do anything don't with do it with again it. i told you i just needed someone to show me how to fish yep. and so i got that so i went from selling one house in a year to being one year with EXP and I've sold 22 homes. Woo! I would have it would have been, <laughs> That's would have amazing. Been, Congratulations. In a pandemic. In a pandemic. And, in a and pandemic. A, so I I'm, was wait a minute. I we got to go back. <laughs> Taylor, we're from Southern yes. house in 10 months. To mm-hmm. 22 in a year. 22. And I was on track for 28. Six of the deals fell apart the last two months because of COVID. Appraisal yeah. is weird. And so that has happened. But to still close on 22, I'm okay with that. That is amazing. Like, and Before okay, let's not call, even just talk about that because now you know how to fish too, girl. Yes. So you you applying what you learn at and it's working because clearly yeah. you went from one to 20, 20, 20, 22, 22. Uh, so you, so what you learn, it works. It works. It works. And it's not just what you learn. It's also the environment and your people you surround yourself with. Agreed. Like I, the conversations are different. God. Again, like it's exposure. Like the level, Gogo said something to me that just really, really messed me up. So I love see seeing her live out her dream. Yep. So their dream of being snowbirds. That's and, and that's me and my husband dream because we live in Chicago. And this, before I even came here, I was like, because we bought a building and we flipped it. Like we got all these uh, exit plan strategies, right? Right. And I was like, I really just want to be a snowbird. I just want to leave. And then I come over here and yeah. she's living the dream. Like she's living. And for me, that means it's possible. The way I live my life is that if I'm praying for something and God puts yep. somebody in my space that's living, yes. I'm living, I don't say, oh my God, look at them. I say, oh my God, God, thank you for showing me the way to it's get It's the there. blueprint. This is the He's blueprint showing you. Sometimes there. you have to visually see it. <laughs> you, you have, have to, to see that see it. it can be done. Everything and the fact in my life has been like that. 
you had an issue and the fact that you can call her up right away and she's going to answer the phone and help you. That's the blueprint. This is an everyday person just like us. Yep. And she's able to achieve this. And And so this is what she said to me. I was like, I'm so happy for you and Dwayne to see you guys living this out. Like, it's amazing. And she goes, you're going to be my neighbor next year. And I was like, because you, what? Yeah. We all gonna be. Down she doesn't honey. know that that Cody was a didn't pack up plan. too, and she okay. Cody well, <laughs> did there for a month. I'm like, we all half of our exp, our whole team half of our out. exp family right now is in Florida. <laughs> they are. They're all in Florida right now. There's like four gonna be five them, agents I can name off that are there right now. Yep, 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 yep. So Never I was like, them. and as I've been thinking, I talked to my family about. it. First of all, my daughter started crying. She's like, no, I want to be home for Christmas in the snow. And then I showed her pictures of Gogo and her family on the beach. And she's like, hmm. Hmm. she didn't know it was an option. She didn't know it was an option that because right of there. exposure. And so well, once I showed her, yep. you didn't know it was a possibility. You didn't know it was a possibility. Yeah. because That's why it's important who you surround you yourself with. It's so you become the average of the five people. Because like you talked about investment properties. Here I am, EXP. Not on, when I say EXP has changed my life, oh my the God. quality of my life. Yeah. You know, they say you want to strive for seven streams of income. I have three right now with EXP, and I'm working on my fourth. Okay, so let's talk so, about I'm, that really I'm, quick because we didn't go yep. into that because you had twenty something, you had twenty four, twenty two closings mm-hmm. in the twenties. You you in the twenties. In those closings, though, did you do the stock program the with the? Yes. Yes. Let's talk about that. <laughs> that go that other stream of income right there. Yes. What does that look like for you? You don't have to give numbers if you don't want to, but. Well, one, I had originally set it up where money would be taken aside from every commission check. Yep. Five percent. Yep. I didn't look at it for a while because I forgot about it. And me so, too um, <laughs> i was like oh yeah that thing <laughs> yeah i didn't pay attention to it and so yeah. one day we were in the office and um one of my teammates he goes did y'all check the stock today and i'm like no i, I honestly haven't i said like, i need to learn more about stocks me He's too like, that's what i said i don't even know about this stream of income so i'm yeah I, i'm learning like what that yeah. looks like and what it means yeah, yeah. who you surround yourself with yep. this is they talk about he was like well sign in right now show you how to get into it girl i said (laughs) tell me he was like you got all these shares you're not gonna do anything with it i don't even know what's here tell me tell me i want to know give me the number give me the number (laughs) okay it's the last time i looked i want to say it was almost six thousand and i I took three thousand out of that a while back so it was a nice little chunk so let's talk about that then because so people understand that's a sort another source of income. Other other places weren't giving us no stock to have have. Well, well let's talk about my out. sponsor. My my sponsor, you know, she iconed. So okay, when she and iconed and hit that back. cap, she yeah. got that sixteen thousand back. Yep, 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 yep. And hers is what a hundred thousand something. Yeah. So and and people oh. like. I don't think people understand the level of um, wealth that becomes like you're doing the same job and getting yep. paid in multiple ways. The same yep. job. The same job. The and see, at another talk brokerage, about leverage. You sell a house and that's it. That's it. You're not getting paid you're on broke again. future money. You're broke you're again. Chasing the next, the next commission. The next. And how long are we going to keep doing that? And you want to know something else. They say that, oh, I think it's over 80%. I like my statistics, as you can see. But over 80% of Americans don't even have $1,000 in their savings account. We got that in stock, honey. And if you need it, like you yeah, said, you took down $3,000. Yeah. To three, and you still and so, so I got my commissions. I have my stocks. Now let's talk about rev share. Yep. I have 10 people that I'm sponsoring right now. So I'm building my team. In a year. Oh my God. <laughs> in a year. And that is amazing. I have three that are consistent. Yeah. 
And, and before I joined EXP, a part of that whole big dream of mine was to eventually become a broker one day and have a team. But the way EXP is set up, I can choose if I want to get my broker's license or not. Or I can We don't have to get it. And one of the to. things for me is I, I, I tell people I am a big, big thinker. So I hire somebody because um, I used to have a brick and mortar um, business and mm-hmm. I hire people to do the details. Yeah, that just ain't me. So in order to like have your own brokers, you're going to have to be part of that compliance running behind agents. That just don't sound fun to me. The training Uh part and motivating them and getting them hype and helping them reach their goals is what makes me like that's like the exciting part. Now I can do that without worrying about the compliance. I don't have to worry about that stuff. I don't have to follow behind an agent to make sure they filled out their contract right so we don't get sued or in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So I get to And you're not cutting out of your pay to pay them. And you're not cutting out that. And they don't have to pay me anything out of their pay. They don't have to pay me nothing. And so that leads me into my another stream of income from EXP that I'm working on. I signed up. I will be an EXP certified mentor because I'm helping Woo! people anyway. I might as well get paid for it. You might as well get paid for it. That's and amazing. me and you going to talk later because I said by the end of the year, give me a year or two, I want to start getting investment property. Yep. Yep. Again, but being with this company has allowed me to build generational wealth for my family. Yep. I'm on the track to do that. Yep. Amazing. And, it's, it's and let me ask you this. Did you, did you get to leave the hospital? I did. <laughs> one year and it got to the point that i would work a six to three shift pick my kids up get them set up show houses then my weekends i was doing open houses and showing how i was always gone and so my husband's like yeah i think it's time oh i got and then when i switched to exp and then hold on this is how good god is i'm like you set me up god he i mean he always has a plan for you <laughs> always i didn't know a plan. pandemic was coming you didn't know. I didn't know we would be forced mm-hmm. to be home. Yeah. Thank God for setting me up with a brokerage that's completely virtual. Yep. And so not only when we got shut down in March and they said that realtors were not considered essential and we couldn't go out, I closed three houses that month virtually. Wow. I didn't attend but, the closing. Why? Because I couldn't we were attend already anything. set up for that. And I wasn't here yet. Um, I came over in like August. So okay. yeah, but- it yeah. was, it was you, we already had the blueprint. Right. There was no need. To and I, and I right. talked to a couple of people at my old brokerage and they weren't doing anything. Office was closed. The brick and mortar building was closed. Yep. That you need so much to be able that to. That you need. <laughs> and it's just crazy. And so oh there's, and, I, and I, I thank God because with this company, my kids are doing virtual learning. Yay. Yep, and this but is how you're going to be able to go. Y'all going to be. I've able been to go home with them. I've been home with them, right along the side of them, doing my work. Once they're done with school, I'm out showing houses. Yep, and everybody's home and safe. So I'm like, there's no way I could pull that off being somewhere else. God is so amazing. Yes, you got to you leave really that is. hospital job. You yes. went back, but it was only to so God could reposition. Yeah, and yeah. even though I was there, I trust me, it was hard. I was like, oh God. But I made sure I, for the eight hours, because I'm a medical biller, so I'm just at a computer for eight hours. Mm-hmm. I had podcasts playing. Yep. Stuff that would stimulate me, stimulate my mind. I was reading certain books. My husband is an author. I was reading his books. He has growth through it. And just those times, I was feeding my spirit, feeding, feeding my mindset. Spirit. Yes, yes. And that's what helped me get through that. And it yep. was one year and I came out stronger and better and, yep. and doing what I love and what I have a passion for. Amazing. So um, to wrap this up, because we're, we're yep. in it, we've been in it here a little while. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're still with us, um, if you, if, if, if there's an agent listening to this right now, that's in your shoes, that kind of just went the, with the brokerage that just you know, they was with when they signed up for school or somebody and, and they're, they're not getting that support and they're on the fence about EXP because it's just so different, um, but they haven't sold any houses or they've sold one in 10 months. What would you say to them? I would say, give me a call. <laughs> call me. <laughs> I'm serious because part of that is I have a heart to help people. Yep. And so, again, if I can help you avoid some of the pitfalls and the experiences that I went through to help you succeed faster, 
that's what I'm going to do. And yeah. so I would say, call me, call Julia and let's partner up. I mean, you know, every Wednesday we do the why not EXP. Yep. Yep. I say, don't let people say things about stuff because they really don't have the knowledge of it yep. or maybe something that they're unable to do. Yep. I say, do your own research. And that's something that do I failed research. to do in the beginning. Yep. Do your research wherever you choose to go. Maybe yep. EXP is not the right fit for you, but do your research, do your due diligence. And then who's to say I would have came in if it didn't work, you just go somewhere else. Just go, go ahead, said a long time ago, someone said, you're not a tree. You don't have yep. to stay there. You don't have to stay <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And loyalty like, used to get me. Loyalty. I was loyal to real estate. Loyal, they were good to what? me. They were yep. nice to me. I have nothing bad to say about them. Yep. But it wasn't the right fit for me to take me where I saw myself going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't and work. and and that's so the I'd thing say, too. The brokerage I left, they were uh, the because I've been at two. So the second one yeah. I left right before EXP, there was yeah. nobody was everybody was nice. It was great. Yeah. Like nobody was mean. I didn't leave them because it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't them it was me yeah. they weren't the ship that was going to get me to my destination it just wasn't and here we are on a zoom call you're in chicago yep. i'm yep. in michigan and we're business partners yep we're business there partners. i truly believe in my heart there's room for everybody to yeah. win if yeah. you don't mind working hard and you text smart we can do business you got it we're going it, it, it's it's uh, it is nowhere but up from there so yes. thank you so much for sharing your amazing, amazing story. Ama- thank like, you so much. I got chills with you just sharing it. Um, thank you. Um, and I just and I'll, and I'll say, follow me on social media, yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. I'm Taylion Prayer. That's, oh, actually, it's on the screen. You can see the spelling. Um, Instagram, Realtor Taylion Prayer. Uh, phone number 734-730-8862. Again, I'm just here to help contact Julia because we're looking yep, and for and I'll business drop partners. some links in, in the bottom of um the yes. video so you'll have Perfect. our social media and phone number so again thank you so much and I look forward because I know you know thank we you. see each other every week so <laughs> yes All and right. we'll be talking because the investing is going to happen soon so definitely definitely next. it's definitely another one another one of those yes. arms in the pot so um stick around I'm in this you guys again our information is going to be in the in the box below or wherever you see this on social media, contact us. So-